Hi, welcome to the Keep Streets Live podcast. And we're joined today with in Police Inspector Diane Bradbury and Paul Walker from Carlisle City Council. And we're going to be talking about the guide to busking in Carlisle, which we've just worked together to set up now. So, okay. This is Errol. <laughs> yeah, hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so do you guys want to talk a little bit about uh, maybe what, what well, yeah, should we talk yeah. a little bit about what happened and what? Yeah, if, if I start from um, where it all began, maybe so, you came into the city centre, it was last year now. It was November, it? November, yeah. November time, yeah. 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 Um, so, um, just to, to sort of confirm, my own, I'm Inspector Dive Bradbury and I'm responsible for um, the city centre as well as Carl Island outlying rural areas, so quite a big patch, but the only place maybe that people come to busk is, is in the city centre. Um, I'd had limited involvement before in anything to do with busking, so um, when I got your complaint, now I'll go into that a little bit, it, it was really interesting for me to have a look at some of the um, uh, policies that were produced by the council, what really guidelines were there for busking and things. So my understanding is you came to busk in November and you were um, went outside a spot that looks really appealing but it just happens to be underneath um, residence flats, one of the only resident areas in Carlisle. Um, and you were asked to leave and you said, well, mm, not so sure, and then you were asked to leave again and then my police officers and PCSOs came and handed you a copy of the Public Place Protection. Public, public, public Space, space protection, protection Order, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that one. Um, and, and you challenged it mm -hmm. because when you read it, it seemed to be pertinent to cars and volume of music from cars, not busking. Mm -hmm. And that was the only sort of legislation that my guys had to, to go on. Um, so you put your complaint in, and I had a little research, and then I spoke to you. And actually, do you know what? I agreed with you that it didn't look right what was on the public space protection order. It did seem to refer mm -hmm. um, just to cars. But then, of course, I made inquiries with the council, um, and um, they told me how how it had come about the public protection order. And actually, although the wording was a bit um, uh, rubbish, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just say it. Um, it was pertinent. It did cover busking. It just was not obvious at all in that wording, and it made me think. Do you know what? I think there's a way forward here. And of course, we spoke. What you said was, well, we had a bit of an email, email correspondence, then we spoke, and I thought, no, this is the way forward. It's not just a complaint this that I can resolve, because there's more underlying issues to it. Um, and I was talking to a team member of mine who said, Harrogate have got a really good code of conduct for busking. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, he dug that out for me, he got that, and I looked at it, and then we started sharing it, and from that, I think that's we've got to where we are. Mm -hmm. So there's yourselves, there was um, Chester as well, mm -hmm. Um, and um, Andy from the council, um, and, and, between, well. and Helen, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. Helen. So between us, I think we've come up with a really decent, supportive guide that protects the rights of buskers. Mm -hmm. It even covers if buskers are having sort of disputes problems. over yeah. patches as well. Yeah. Um, covers the sensitive areas in Carlisle, so they're the ones where there's residents basically. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's a go-to document, but it's new. This is this is between us from the complaint, and you were dead right to challenge. I mean, I did I did say to you, didn't I? Thanks for your complaint, mm -hmm. and I genuinely did. meant that because it opened up a whole new avenue for us. Mm -hmm. Built some really good relationships, I think. Absolutely. Definitely We've broken Definitely. down some barriers. Definitely. Definitely. And you also uh, spoke to the residents in the um, sensitive areas as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Um, me and one of my sergeants went down. Um, and there was about four or five residents turned up. So um, the way that it works is when those residences were, were built, yeah. the city centre wasn't quite as it is now. You know, McDonald's wasn't there and Costas wasn't there and, and that sort of thing. So it's developed around the residents. And they accept that Buskin, they definitely accept that Buskin is part of the life of the city centre. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, listening to the residents sometimes especially if buskers are repetitive and they say they play, play the same six or seven songs over and over. They've left, they've left the homes to go out for the day rather than put up and then sometimes when they've challenged, they've been met with abuse. 
and lots of the residents are a certain age group where they might not particularly feel that confident about approaching you know buskers anyway or, or anybody um, and it's left them feeling quite alienated so I think it was dead important we had some really good discussions around that yeah it was really important we, we, we met with them um, and they were really pleased with this mm -hmm. and they accept that sometimes with busking underneath they do they accept that um, but that there's some protection for them there, you know. So if you're asked to move, you'll be offered other pitches to go to. And I think when we were talking, when we looked at the, the map that Andy produced, um, there were pitches that you hadn't thought of. Definitely. That are really good ones, mm. actually, and yeah. get a good footfall. So it's maybe opened up the arena for you. Yeah, yeah I think absolutely. definitely for especially for visiting buskers as well who don't necessarily know the city. Yeah. You know, it's it's good to have a, a map there that give you gives you an idea of different places that you can go that it, that you're not gonna uh, find any sort of problems with the authorities and stuff. So which is always good. I think um, as a city we're exceptionally lucky um, in that we do attract buskers from far and wide. I mean, there mm -hmm. is a regular busker that attends the city centre every couple of weeks or so, and he travels from Glasgow to do so. So. In some respects, we should feel quite privileged that our city centre is highly thought of in that respect. Um, and in terms of the mixed use of it, um, as we know, town centres and city centres everywhere are struggling. But in Carlisle, it, it does seem to book the trend somewhat, and perhaps that's due to the mixed use development. So accepting that there are residents living in the immediate city centre, yeah. identifying the areas where they live, is actually beneficial to the buskers anyway, um, because their presence diversifies the use of the city centre and mm -hmm. keeps it vibrant mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that there is a footfall there and there's an audience for buskers to play to. Yeah, yeah, we love coming to Carlisle to busk. It's, it's a friendly city and it's a nice environment to play in as well and people really enjoy it. It's, it's a good place to come and mm -hmm. we enjoy it. And just the, the guidance notes that it won't just be a standalone document. Yeah, we'll try and make them as attractive as possible. But for buskers that are visiting on the day, that we're, we're producing a quick reference guide as well with just the bullet points. Which is, on. Yeah, which so is we can just list. hand out um, because yeah. sometimes it's difficult when a busker's performing a set to actually interrupt that set, and we yeah. don't like as officers to necessarily do that. Um, I understand that. But yeah. we can hand them the quick reference guide mid set. Mm -hmm. and then when they're finished they can have a look and if there's any questions they can come to us and ask that's um, brilliant but we want to make it as easy and accessible as possible um, but the root of this is almost like a, a self-policing mechanism mm -hmm. so that buskers don't encounter problems when they visit Carlisle um, and so that they don't encounter problems when they come across each other trying to buy for the same pitch mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and also it works um, for the businesses as well. Um, I don't know, have you guys been rolling any of this out slowly at all over the past few months or not? Or not? really. We will be doing shortly. Um, there is a group of city centre businesses which is about to start meeting um, and this will certainly be something that I'd, they'll be made aware of. I just um, wonder because um, we came busking the other day um, and the reason I wondered was um, it was in action. It was working in action. It was great. Um, we'd move spots slightly and when we'd move spots, it meant that the amplifier was um, closer to another closer shop, to basically. Shop. Yeah. And the lady came out and asked us if we'd turn down. We offered to move, and she asked us not to move. She asked us just to turn down. So that was really good. And I just wondered if you guys had actually been speaking to people or not, because in for, it not was in great. a formal manner, not yet. Um, we do need to finalise the guidelines. They're still somewhat draft. I mean, they're, they're largely there. Yeah. Um, and within the next couple of weeks, they'll be ready to go. Um, and at which point we'll engage with local businesses and just make sure that they appreciate the needs of the buskers and the buskers appreciate the needs of the people that have to work and live and shop and spend leisure time in the city centre. Yeah. Um, and one thing that is apparent in Carlisle, given the nature of the city centre, is it does lend itself to creative use. Um, it's a brilliant space, traffic free, virtually yeah. flat. Um, and, and we should encourage that use by buskers. Um, but only this week I've had to broker a deal between two groups of buskers that wanted the same pitch and, and it was relatively easy, having read the guidelines, that they did two hours each and took yeah. turns. So Brilliant. that was great. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Yeah. Um, was there a lack of busking spots or were they just... No, they wanted the same. They wanted the right, okay. Yeah. So they set up next to each other and they worked together and they, one you know, did a set and then the other did a set. And it broke the monotony as well, um, mm -hmm. as Diana said. You know, when you get the same six yeah. or seven songs over and over, 
it, it does become slightly irritating. Yeah. And I suppose as well, if you've even if you've got a set of 20, 30 songs, if you're going to go to the same spot every day, yeah. that's going to be repetition as well. Um, and this is something that we've uh, been speaking about with uh, at, at Keep Streets Live recently, is about the about repetition. It's not just about playing the same song on the same day t two or three times. It's about maybe going back and playing in the same spot every, every day. day or yeah. three or four times a week. That's going to affect people even, no matter how good you are. Mm. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not something that we tend to suffer from. But when we get different buskers in, it's interesting to see where the preferred pitches are because everyone is different. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and the music lends itself to a different place um, it might be an acoustic reason I, I'm not an expert but. I think there's something I don't know whether you feel the same but I find when you go to a place I feel I feel sort of drawn to a certain place you know like we keep coming and saying yeah. we're gonna go near the train station we've not been near the train station <laughs> it's yet really busy. exactly but we keep being drawn to the same spot. Yeah. <laughs> we decide near where the bandstand was then because when we were discussing we looked at like the, the map in the different areas Every um, time we've been, there's been somebody in a spot which would have it would have mixed that up too yeah. much. Not down near the cathedral, have you tried? Have you Not yet, there? but I'd really like to try near the cathedral. Go down there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would be really yeah. nice from a, a visiting public point of view um, to have stuff in different areas that you wouldn't necessarily expect to see. It there was a, yeah. there was a chap playing um, the accordion on Fisher Street the other day, and it was very low level, low impact stuff, but. Mm -hmm given the nature of the spot it was, it was it was really it was quite charming to mm -hmm. see him. Um, Excellent. And people seemed to respond really well. Good. I think um, just to cover um, part of that our sort of agreement was and you you said have we been speaking to people about it yet. We were waiting for the final draft. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but when that's done and it is more or less rubber stamp now, isn't it? I'll send that to the residents um, in Hodgson's Court and then there's a training for my lot my staff, so I'm saying my lot, so I've got all the PCSOs who work, um, well all over Carlisle, um, I've got uh, six PCs who go out and about and some problem solvers, some other PCs and sergeants, I'm going to train all of those in this mm -hmm. so that they know exactly what it means, what the discussion points are around it, but like Paul just said, it's quite, it is self-policing and actually this, it, it almost stops with guys from the council, you guys conversation, if the police are coming along it's almost like something has gone wrong really, it might be to yeah. sort out more of a, um, a, a tricky disagreement mm -hmm. that sounds, yeah. but it also makes the council and the police um, more approachable definitely, to buskers because definitely. if a new busker came into town and, and they knew about the guidelines, they know that we know so yeah, they, they, and can, they can come to any of our offices, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, council officers or police officers, and ask a question. Mm -hmm. You know, and we we do yeah. tend to be supportive and promote uh, you know promote the use that's of the estate because yeah. that's that's part of the quirk of our high street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. That's, yeah. that's absolutely brilliant. It's gone on the council brilliant. website, isn't it? Yeah. And then I think you're going to hand out the bullet pointed list to anybody that's got a pitch. So it's really really informative and the beauty of it is core produced. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a fantastic. template, but then Chester worked on that template anyway for Harrogate, right. so we were yeah. revisiting something that he'd already done. Yeah. And we just gave it a, a tweak to fit to Carlisle. Can I ask you guys what's your experience been from you know from that complaint to this journey that we've been on? Personally, I think it's been fantastic. I'm really pleased with the way that we've all managed to work together, and we went from a slightly hostile situation where, if yeah. um, you know, um, the, your colleague was, um, he was very stressed by mm. by everything. You it's know, he was easy. he was getting um, a lot of complaints, and um, and it, he was he was very stressed. And hopefully, this will help to alleviate his yeah. stress because that fact. It's not fair. You know, that has a knock-on effect. We all end up mm. sort of well, uh, in a vicious circle in it, the end. It's a human nature thing. Nobody exactly. likes to tell someone they can't do something. And nobody mm -hmm. likes to be told. So exactly. we end so, up in, yeah. a, in a vicious circle. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I'm delighted, personally, delighted with the way it's worked out. Really positive. Um, really good. And the other thing to mention as well is that it's going... Uh, uh, the public space protection order won't be used against buskers in Carlisle um, if you've got any enforcement uh, problems, will they? They're going to use a um, community protection notice, was it, if there are any Reception issues? Warning. If, but only if um, a busker isn't 
has been warned it would be on a many very, occasions very over it, but I guess but exactly. that's, it, it is there as a deterrent and, mm-hmm. and we're not afraid to use that but it is a very last resort and something that I would like to ask yourself about was when I uh, sent the complaint to you, um, one of the things is about the guidance from the Home Office about um, public uh, antisocial behaviour legislation not being used against buskers unless it is um, genuinely antisocial behaviour. So um, I guess I'd like just your input on that really and from this and both of you, that'd yeah. be great. <laughs> yeah, I mean... The, the legislation that we had was the, was the councils, um, and they had put you know a great deal of thought into mm-hmm. that. It had been run by their legal, and there was no intention at all for that to be no. used against busking. And you know it's not mentioned in there um, at all. In fact, can I just digress a little bit? Chester raised a really interesting point, didn't he, about um, the legal age that you can busk? And I did a bit of research. Yes. Yeah. On the, on the um, police national um, database, and you you can't busk unless you're 16 or over. Right. So some councils have bylaws that allow you to busk if you're 14, but it's got to be with the permission of your parents, and your parents have got to be there. But Carlisle don't have that. Andy sent me all the bylaws and I right. went through, <laughs> and it's um, it's not there. So you've got to be 16 anyway, but there's, there was no intention for that ever to be used against busking for antisocial behaviour. The wording in the public space protection order, because it is very much geared to vehicles, although you know we, we, we can use it, um, well, we, we could have used it with busking, was about when it's affecting residents really. Mm-hmm. Did you, just the wording wasn't really transparent, mm-hmm. but absolutely no intention at all to to use any of that legislation against buskers because it isn't it, it's not the spirit of the act is it's not the spirit of no, the legislation no, absolutely absolutely um, and i think how you know paul's touched on it throughout all of this this conversation but we have this really really good relationship generally with buskers i think it's fantastic yeah. and personally i think the leading by example especially with this um uh, busking guidance. guidance as well yeah. I think it's, it's fantastic terrific. and I think it can really show a lot of other councils a, a good way forward because I know that a lot of places have tried to bring uh, PSPOs in and other legislation against busking and against street performance and I think that it's really sad um, and I think it's maybe a bit misunderstood and I think this could go a long way to, towards helping yeah. to yeah I mean we with as, a, as a council we're open to and we do work with other local authorities all the time um, so I mean if another local authority was to see this podcast and they wanted to ask us some questions then by all means we're, we're happy to speak to anybody That's um, yeah, but in too. terms yeah. of the use Thank of a PSP um, a public space protection order or similar legislation against busking it, it wouldn't really be a busking right. issue and in terms of antisocial behaviour we wouldn't re- apply it to busking unless mm. it was antisocial behaviour so yeah. I, I'm not I'm not quite sure how that would come about um, but that would be the only thing you'd have to go past the point would, of busking yeah, yeah. really yeah, wouldn't it, it? Yeah. Yeah, into, <laughs> some, into, some, yeah, it into was, a different yeah yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was an offensive tirade of stuff then fair enough mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. That's, that's not busking so mm-hmm. that's fantastic yeah. that's brilliant wonderful this is great that's great fabulous um, have you guys got anything else to add um, no not really just to say it's been a really good learning experience for us all it's been fantastic yeah, same here, I that's think so and um, you know, just to echo what Paul said definitely if any other police force is going to get in touch with, with me and see how the conversation you know how, how this came to fruition or they can plagiarise away you know, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. like did, we do with Harrogate um, it's been a real opportunity and, and it, you know you've been so supportive of the conversation, conversations we've had between you know Police yourselves, Chester, um, the council have been uh, like a meeting of minds and a real problem solving expedition for me. It's just like a thank you for, for raising it in the first Fantastic. place oh, thank because you. we've ended up here. Yeah. That's brilliant. And any buskers that are thinking about playing in Carlisle and would like sight of this before they come, just get in touch with us. Um, if they arrive in Carlisle prior to doing that um, in a, the next couple of weeks, the guidelines will be available in the tourist information centre. So. Brilliant. If there's any questions or they want some clarification, just pop in and say That's fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Diane you. and Paul, for taking part in the Keep Street Side podcast. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.